Are you searching for purpose of life? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. God is saying to you every minute of the day, will you say yes? Uh, open yourself to God's invitation. Every one of us has to listen to God, just knowing God is with me. Uh, it's so important to open your heart up so that you can say yes. Hi, I'm Father Nev, and I'm a parish priest of the Archdiocese uh, of Brisbane. I've been a priest for about seven, seven and a bit years. My journey has been predominantly here in Brisbane. My mum and dad were Catholics, and uh, my brother and sister were also raised Catholic, and, and I then went to university. And that was the, probably the first time that I started to seriously think about my faith in a different way. Since before then, it was always about faith that my parents gave me. When I got to uni and I, I started a, a degree in, in information technology, it was there that I started to um, see that uh, there was another way of actually worshipping, praying. This ministry group was a, a Pentecostal based uh, Christian group. Even on the weekends, I would start to go to their Sunday services. That kind of continued uh, even after I finished my degree. And I actually went uh, abroad um, to China to do a little bit of studies uh, in languages. It was only really when I came back, just had a sense that maybe there was something more than just the Pentecostal faith. Like in China at the time, you couldn't actually go to a, a church outside in the public. So we would have to go visit a church um, that was sort of inside a building. I started to actually get a hunger for, for my faith because I wasn't going to church uh, every Sunday. And so whenever I went, I think I realised that I really needed to go to some service and, and practice and, and praise God and worship Him and pray more. One year after I got back from China, I um, went with my mum specifically to a Good Friday uh, liturgy. That was really when I began to return back to my Catholic faith. I don't know, it was probably about four or five years, I, I really started to realised that the Holy Spirit was definitely a, a big, significant part of my faith. And, you know, speaking in tongues, um, people being, you know, Pentecostal and, yeah, just having a different relationship with God. So that was, uh, that was really the beginning of that stage in my life. Uh, and then I returned uh, after coming back from China to the Catholic faith. And then once I left China, um, I spent six months in Hong Kong. And during that time, I uh, met a, an, a Pentecostal uh, Korean church. Suddenly there was actually people I could spend time with, um, feel like there was actually a, com a worshipping community, there were believers. So that's probably what I needed at the time. And then when I returned to Australia, I kind of continued to look for a Pentecostal church. Uh, when I went to 
um, that Good Friday liturgy, it was really powerful because I, you know, seeing Jesus crucified and seeing the, the richness that was in our Catholic faith that I hadn't had for about five years, it made me realise that I had been brought up in a really rich faith and that it was time to return to that and explore that. And so I slowly began to become involved with the church again. I started going on various various retreats. I got to know the Kenoshan sisters and also um, the Carmelite sisters as well. Just a slow rebuilding process of what my faith was about um, and, and sort of trying to integrate both that Catholic side and, and what I learned at the, at the Pentecostal church as well. At some stage, I went over to, to the UK and I did two years there. I worked in, in my preferred field of IT. On my return from, from the UK, kind of guess I had to start making a decision about do I want a family? And that was sort of always in the back of my head was, and I was also pushing away that whole idea of priesthood so the two were sort of being juggled in the air. And so I decided to put a bit more effort into being in a, some sort of relationship. So I was in a relationship for probably two, two and a bit years uh, when I came back from the UK. That was around 99, uh, 2000, I came back from the UK. Uh, it was good to be in that relationship, but then at the same time when it, it sort of didn't work out. I had to start to sit with like, is this, is this where you want me to go, God? Because any other relationship that I began to uh, initiate didn't go, didn't go very far. I went to a World Youth Day in 2005 in Cologne and something I decided to do after that was go on to retreats. One retreat was um, Men Alive and the other retreat was a Casillo retreat. And Casillo is just like a, a four-day weekend where you, you actually revisit why, why do you have a faith and why is it so important to live out your faith in daily life. The chaplain at the time, he decided to, he asked me at a, at a tea break, he said, Father, uh, Nev, um, have you ever thought about being a priest? And from that moment on, that question just stayed inside my head and started to germinate. And uh, eventually I had to actually answer that call seriously uh, over time. I, I moved um, from IT to social services and that was really pivotal because I, I actually learned that I actually had the pastoral skills. Some of my work after IT was uh, working in, uh, working with people with disabilities, children, children and teenagers at risk who were homeless. Uh, when I was in Ireland, when I was over in Europe, I also worked with people with cancer. Uh, I worked with drug and homeless um, on the streets of, of Dublin. Um, and was, I did a range of things that allowed me to actually see, see where God was uh, trying to situate myself um, in my faith. At this stage, I was now starting to think about priesthood a little bit more seriously. I wasn't thinking about being in um, a relationship and thinking about having a family. And then the next thing that came up was uh, World Youth Day 2008 in Sydney. So I went to that and nothing particularly happened during the, the week, but when I came back, I just had this burning desire to find out all about the seminary. When I got back to Brisbane, I approached uh, Mark Lysard, who was the uh, vocations officer for the Archdiocese, and he led me on to to go to the seminary and have a talk to Father Michael McCarthy, who is the rector, who is now a bishop, 
and uh, he he then said, "Look, don't don't worry. Seriously, think about about priesthood." Um, I, I had these. Um, I was hedging my bets. I was sitting on the fence, and I I was sort of saying, "Oh, could I be a permanent deacon and have a family?" But I, and I remember uh, Father Michael saying, "Look, priesthood is the best." Yeah, don't, don't go for second best, go straight to priesthood. Then I started discerning with the spiritual director at the seminary and I pretty much said, look, I, I just want to be happy. I just want to be at peace. I don't want to be searching anymore. Let's go into the seminary and find out. In 2009, I officially uh, went into to Holy Spirit Seminary here at Banyo. I loved the, the prayer. I loved the routine, the order, um, learning more about God seriously in my theology degree. I've had, I had a couple of struggles, maybe on pastoral, pastoral year. I learned that ministry um, and having faith in God comes first over everything else. I uh, spent uh, an, uh, five years in the seminary, uh, including my pastoral year. So it was generally smooth sailing. It was. I think the biggest task for God was to actually get me into the seminary. Once I got there, it was uh, quite, a, quite an easy task after that. In the middle of 2012, I was ordained a deacon, and then in end of 2013, I became uh, a priest. So I was uh, ordained on the, the eve of St. Andrew uh, and uh, that wonderful night. Um, and, and then, yep, I, I started my journey at the cathedral as a newly ordained priest. One of my most important opportunities as a priest has been uh, the chaplain to the Emmanuel community. And the Emmanuel community is a charismatic uh, community. All during that time, I've had, had uh, wonderful experiences to develop my own spirituality and to feel more comfortable uh, surrendering to, to the Holy Spirit in my prayer life. We want the Holy Spirit to be mainstream in the Catholic Church. My confidence, my uh, connection with the Holy Spirit must have been, you know, off the charts because I, I began to preach in my homilies really freely, um, with confidence, with boldness, and uh, I haven't really uh, gone backwards since. It, it's just been a a exponential growth in my own faith and in my own confidence in what the Holy Spirit is doing in my, my ministry. Other things that I did, being part of uh, NET Ministries, so National Evangelization Teams, got to meet a lot of those young adults. I would have the opportunity to speak to them, encourage them. The Ignite Conference was a very, uh, important event for the community. It, you know, getting to know a lot of the families uh, on a really personal level, obviously doing everything from weddings to funerals. I think I did about seven or eight weddings during my time. Uh, and that, that's been a real blessing. Just to see the effort and the desire they put in to making their community as enriching and formative for their members as well as uh, those who are not part of community. Another pastoral experience uh, during my time as a priest has been Marriage Encounter. Um, marriage Encounter is a worldwide movement. I really enjoy about Marriage Encounter is that it combines both the vocation of priesthood with the vocation of marriage, and together they work in tandem. Uh, they're not seen as separate 
uh, vocations, but as, as one and the same, but different. I've got to meet um, people and, and really learn, obviously, about marriage and how I can actually train and form uh, people that are preparing for marriage and some of the pitfalls that they can start looking out for before it actually happens to them. Uh, weekends are great because you get to um, share with uh, the participants, the other couples, the importance of both what priesthood means and both what marriage means and the importance that each of those vocations lives out. I was remembering a story uh, about a couple that I, I married and uh, there were some difficult situations within that, that relationship. One of the people was uh, formerly in prison and so they, they needed a little bit of assistance and work around their faith, giving them confidence that the community was looking, looking after them. I actually had to work very, very hard to ensure uh, these two people stayed together. I also recall another time uh, helping someone who was experiencing difficulties in their life, was, was contemplating uh, suicide. I remember that moment uh, quite vividly in my pastoral ministry. Uh, I had to spend numerous uh, times talking them, talking to them, reinforcing how important their faith was to them and, and giving them a sense that they were um, a child of God, loved by God, and that by taking, taking their life, uh, you would diminish the dignity that that person had. Two of my favorite sacraments are probably the Holy Eucharist. Every time I get up there, it's an opportunity to praise God, pray with the people of God at the same time, minister to myself when I'm receiving communion and when I'm praying on behalf of the people. Reconciliation's another beautiful sacrament and particularly, particularly with people that have been gone through a lot of heartache, are broken, and you see that moment where they see that glimmer of hope the, that, that sense that God does love them. And through this sacrament, uh, they are brought back um, in communion and reconciliation with, with the Lord. Probably my third favorite sacrament is weddings. Just uh, the amount of time that I spend with a couple and then seeing, seeing the fruit of all that pre-work that we did, I feel really privileged that I can actually uh, share my wisdom, counsel them, and set them on the road to, you know, a fruitful and productive marriage. My relationship with Jesus has changed over over time. I, I feel. Uh, a lot more connected to the Holy Spirit. Um, and when I pray now, it's, I don't pray as much uh, as with rote prayers, but I, I just talk to, to Jesus and the Holy Spirit uh, just as if they were right in front of me. And yeah, I, I find that's the more authentic uh, relationship that I've been slowly developing over time. As a, as a priest, I've tried to ensure that I, I look after my spirituality. I'll probably pray three times a day, minimum, and then on top of that, I pray just when I need God, whenever there's an issue or I'm going into a, a difficult meeting, I just, I just simply call on Jesus. And normally at these meetings, you're praying anyway, so I've, I've learned to just draw on the strength of, of God anytime, anywhere. Whenever I feel like I'm moving away from God um, or something's distracting me, I just make sure that I go back to the basics of just regular prayer, 
reading the Word of God. So even in my prayer, just being still for a longer period of time than I normally would have been. And that helps me to just go, yeah, I, I, need, I need to hear God's voice again. Uh, when I have all those other things coming in, I can't hear His voice. That's when I need to spend that time to just open, open up my heart and mind again to just being quiet and removing those distractions. Uh, when I look at my whole life at, the, at present uh, and I'm thinking about where, where God started this journey with me and now where I am, in my mind at the start, I had a passion and it, well, I thought I had a passion for um, being in a relationship and being married. But then over time, I realised that uh, my pursuit of a relationship wasn't leading me to God and it wasn't bringing me peace. It's so important to open your heart up so that you can say yes, that you open your heart up so that you can discern and give God time and give yourself time to actually hear God's voice. And if He is actually talking to you seriously about a vocation, then you need to follow and listen carefully. So that's my encouragement is keep um, asking God, you know, where are you calling me, God? Um, and for me, um, now that I'm a priest, I've been a priest now for seven and a bit years, God continues to even call me into different directions within priesthood. Uh, and that's essentially what God is doing in each one of your lives. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Shalom World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you you're involved, to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.